Here we are on a Sunday morning. I make the classes over the weekend usually for the week coming up. This is going to be class F scheduled for this coming Thursday. And the class uh, chapter F is on thick lenses. Now we're back to Algebra City here. We're doing lots of algebra and it's easy to get lost in algebra. So we'll uh, take our time and go, go slow. Uh, hope you enjoyed the last class. That had a lot of algebra. In fact, we went over a little bit in time. Um, usually I can uh, get everything done in less than 75 minutes and that I needed a little bit extra time. You know, Dr. Bennett, who would have been teaching this class, if he was doing face-to-face, -face, what he would do is put on the schedule extra time. He would do this. He discovered this principle so that uh, he had more than 75 minutes. So it would be like an equivalent of like a four-hour course, and he could then uh, have more time to take his time and, and do better work. And it was optional, I think, for attendance. You didn't have to stick around, but still, uh, that shows the... Uh, the importance of the time and it takes time to do the algebra and I like Dr. Bennett's idea uh, but for for distance learning uh, we really don't want to do that uh, because it's really tough uh, on distance learning to do more than 75 it's really hard to do more than an hour so you'll find that most of my classes are going to be around around the hour time frame and the nice thing, though, about the distance learning is you can always stop the thing in the middle and say, I'll, I'll get the other half later. That You know, you know I, I, did, I did 30 minutes, have my, my notes uh, there, and I'll just come back. So, so that's a nice thing. And we do follow the book. So if, if you look at the book, the notes are really the book. So that also takes a lot of pressure, pressure off. And if you have any questions, you, you know how to contact me. All right, thick lenses, that's a nice topic. And chapter F. Thick lenses. And F1, cardinal points. These are special points with a thick lens and we can start, maybe you have some kind of lens here, a thick lens. An optic axis through the center. So here's one of the cardinal points right here where the optic axis hits the uh, first surface. And then here's another point here that's important. Now, if light goes out parallel, and there's some magic point here that does that, then what we can say is that we have two points like that. If we have, for example, there's another one over here. So what these points are saying is that if the light should start here as a spotlight and you know go out here, it's going to go out parallel. And if it starts here and goes out parallel there, see with the thin lens, they're the same on either side. So you know light can go out like this, and then similarly there. So we have these two focal points that are not going to be the same distances. So we're going to call this one the front focal point and call this one the back focal point and the length of the distance from the point uh, to the lens is the front focal length and this is then the back focal length. Uh, these points here uh, we can call that uh, say a V a vertex and say a V prime and we could just call this focal point and this one here say focal point prime. Then 
there's an effective focal length. And the effective focal length would be the one where if you measure from these planes, right, these special planes here, that if you measure, say, the distance to the image from that plane and the distance to the object from this plane, if you do that, then you get a formula, 1 over SO plus 1 over SI is 1 over F. And that would be the effective focal length. So you can think of that as coming from here to there. And then from the front one to this, to this one here. Now, now some, so a way, a way to look at that's kind of cool. You can look at that in our book. We have this uh, nice diagram uh, from Wikipedia. And you can see how when the light hits the first surface, it's going to bend toward the normal. If you have your normal in there, it bends toward normal. And then here, if you have a normal, there, it's going to bend away from the normal. And it appears to bend at this one place. And see, that's that principal plane we're talking about. That's an, another way of looking at this effective focal length, that this is the effective place where if it were to bend once, the light would go out parallel. While in effect, you know, it refracts in two places. So, and then the same thing happens on the other side, you know, reverse, you can reverse the logic. So, a mathematician probably would say, well, shouldn't we call this effective focal length one and two? I mean, how do you know they're, they're the same? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to derive one of these. And when we derive one of these, we have, you know, light coming from the left side. We're going to get a formula that's symmetric in terms of parameters of the surfaces, which means if you turn it around, you get the same result. So that would justify that these are going to be the same. But to complicate things even more, remember, we had the definition of a focal length due to one surface. So that's going to crop in F1 and F2 for the back surface. It's going to be a lot of fun today. Lots of focal, lots of focal lengths all over the place. One, two, three, you know, four technically, if we, at, at first we don't consider them equal, five, six, it's going to be fun and neat algebra. So let's get started. And the way we're going to get started on this, and this is going to be uh, F2, I'm going to just go ahead and label these points because they do have cool, cool letter names. And uh, this is like P and this is P prime, these points here. These are the cardinal points. So you have F, a cardinal point, this is a vertex point, and then the plane, uh, the point where the plane intersects the optic axis. This is always optic axis here through the center. And then there's three over here, if you think like in reverse, coming from the other, other way. And we put the primes, uh, primes on on those. So the cardinal points, V, P, and F on either side. Okay, so now we're ready to do the formula for one of these. We're going to first of all not worry about this F. We're going to, we're going to find the back focal length. Let's find this one first. All right, so the formula for the back focal length. Uh, some books you might find back focal length like that. And we're just going to use with a little B there, which uh, Professor Bennett, my colleague who retired, used this notation. This one was used by the Hecht and Zajac book that I used to teach from uh, once uh, many, many years ago. 
Okay, so let's now start with something we had from last class. We had a cut of glass like this, all right? And we have, say, another cut over here like this. And if we have a point, you know, A here, you know, we had an image point here. I think we may have called it D. Let's just call it B for now. And then C, like the image out there. So, uh, so like this would hit here and, you know, you can go to this point as an image, but then is this an object uh, for the next case? Then you, you treat that as an object and like goes out, it's going to then wind up at C. And then we will uh, use the notation that this is the object distance for the first uh, here. This is the object distance right here for the first surface. And this would be the image distance for the first surface. We put a little one there. All right, and this uh, is gonna be air. This is gonna be glass. And this is going to be air. And we could have the index of refraction for the air, for the glass, and for the air. And then we derive the formula. So the index of refraction of air over S01 plus the index of refraction of the glass in image 1 is equal to the glass index of refraction minus the air over R1. So this is like the first surface here, and this is the second one. So this equation we derived in the previous class. Then we can write the same one general uh, form here for the second one where we interchange uh, glass and air since we're going to go from the glass to the air. So this becomes then a G. And this is the object for the second surface, which is this one here. And then this little piece here will be the image distance for the second surface. So plus N air on the outside, and that's over the second image distance. And then you swap these because you're going from the air to the glass. You're going from the glass to the air. So these get flipped around. And we have seen this before. Okay, so the starting point. And then the key piece is to relate uh, here your thickness. And you might say, well, you know, what about the little curvature here? Remember, we're going to look at we're gonna look at small angles. So if we look at small angles, uh, we're basically gonna have a D, you know, go from, D is from there to there. So uh, when you uh, look at that D and subtract this image distance, you're gonna get this. So in other words, the object distance for the second lens is the D, you know, from here to there minus the SI1. So we're all set now. We're basically all set to start doing some algebra. This is like the, the setup. And here, uh, we're going to uh, make the substitutions to simplify. And, and since we're gonna be dealing with air and glass, we go ahead and let the air index of refraction be one and the glass index of refraction be n, then the equations look a little bit friendlier. All right, so we have, if we do that, if we do that there, uh, we will have one over S01 plus n over SI1 is n minus one over R1, that takes care of this first one. And the second one here would be N over S02 plus one over SI2 
is then 1 minus n over r2. So if we look at these equations and compare it to, say, the master equation, uh, which is like this one here, sort of a master basic equation, these look similar if, all right, let's go ahead and make some kind of observation here that if we have this general formula, th this is working if the SO, say, is equal to SO1, and the SI in here would be this SI1 divided by N. Like, this is like an equivalent, like we're just, we're just looking at this general form and saying, hey, this kind of looks like that with these substitutions. And then the F, and this will be the F for the first surface, would be, you would just, this is one over F, so you flip it and you get this. Okay, so that's uh, an observation. We make that observation. Then, using the magnification for the first surface, that would be going as a guide, the master formula here. This would then become uh, the SI uh, has an SI1 over N. There's a minus sign, it's still around, and then there's an SO down here. And that would be with the 1. And then for surface 2, so this is surface 1, for surface 2, if we make this uh, correspondence here, this formula, we would have for surface 2, S0, uh, O, o SO here, for surface 2, would be this one, see it has the N there, so it's going to be this O2 divided by N, because it flips, see. So this, this is 1 over SO, so then if you flip it, you get the SO. And this is like for the second lens. So this is, this is a set lens surface. This is like for the first surface, and now we're looking at the second surface. So then the SI here would be the SI2 when we apply uh, the formula, and the F2 would be the R2. Uh, this has a minus sign, so I'll put a minus sign like that. And then the magnification using you know, the general formula here and now substituting in, we get for SI, we're going to have the SI2. Uh, and if we divide by this thing, the N comes upstairs, the N comes upstairs and we have O2. And this would be the situation for the second surface. So it's nice to, to have these formulas kind of find, find this uh, useful. So we can think of, we can think of here uh, for the first surface going on, we're going to have uh, this formula. So let's go ahead and look at this one. This is the one that we already looked at. And I'm going to write it down again. All right, so 1 over S0, 1 plus N over S, I, 1. I sometimes say 0, but that's really object. Oh. Okay, so this is going to be the 1 over F1. And then right beside it, we'll write down uh, the second case, which would be I uh, hear this really shouldn't have been up like that. It should have been here. There we go. And then the second case would be, uh, this is the, sec the second case here. We come down here. This is N over S02O2 plus 1 over S 
I2 is 1 over F2. Okay, now let's uh, do these in parallel. Uh, let's play with these. N over SI1 is 1 over F1 minus SO1. What I'm going to do is I want to solve for the image distance. So really, that's the idea here. Solve for the SIs, and there's two of them here. I'm going to do it in parallel. So this is 1 over SI2 is 1 over F2 minus N over SO2. Okay? And then what we do next is uh, we're going to combine on the right-hand side, so S uh, and over S I1. This would be F1, S O1. I would need an S O1 minus F1. So you know, if I divide this into that first one, the S's cancel. I have the 1 over F1. I divide this into the second one, the S cancel, and I get this. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we're trying to isolate the image distance in each case. And this would be then, well, we can kind of like see by copying that it would be this. But we'll go ahead and check it. We'll go ahead and check it. All right, so the SO2s cancel, 1 over F2. Here, the F2s cancel, N over SO2. Then we go 1 over the image distance, SO1 minus, so object O1 minus F1. And then we're going to divide by the N, get this. And do the same thing over here. Oh, I have nothing to do here. Divide by one. <laughs> so I'll just go ahead and keep them side by side as we go. And then we flip the SI1, we flip it, and F1, SO1, we're just flipping it. And we flip this one. Flip it. That's O2 minus NF2. Okay, now we use the trick that the SO2 is the distance D minus the image distance. So this is the key now to use this, and that's going to be for wherever you have, uh, wherever you have this uh, O2, we're going to substitute. So if we look at that, it's going to be like this one here. So if we look at where that's going to go, it's like, like here it is. Like here is the, the O2. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to like put it in there. So then S I2 is F2, then D minus S I1 over, uh, and we put it in here too, there's two places, D minus S I1 minus N F2. Okay, so then if we go up here, the S I2, we're going to multiply in the F2D minus F2SI1 over D minus SI1 minus NF2. Okay, and we could could write this in a slightly different different form. It doesn't really matter. We can uh, 
swap the order here. Okay. So what we're doing is we're trying to trace through, through the thick lens. And, and here, like this is good because this is the second, this is like the, the one that's gonna be on the outside. That's, that's the final image. I don't want this intermediate stuff. I really don't want this intermediate stuff here. So here, if I look over to this one, I could say, well, you know, we can get rid of, we can get rid of now the intermediate, see, uh, this is the intermediate, we'll call the image, say intermediate one. So I, I wanna get stuff in terms of O1 and I2. I mean, that's what I'm looking for. And I, I realize I can pull it off with this last substitution. So if we do this last substitution, we would then have SI2. We would have this F2D here. And then we would have a minus sign. And this F2, would be hitting all this stuff. So let's uh, let's just write down this SI1 again so we can see it next to the other equation here. So that's gonna go in here, that's gonna go in there. So this is gonna be then an N. There's gonna be each F is gonna be present. And then S uh, zero, one, or object one. And then uh, we're gonna be dividing that by the S01 minus F1. Okay, that's just sitting in, it's basically whatever this is times F2. So you basically have your N, F1, the F2 is there, so got all that stuff. And then here you have D minus and F2, and then we have to then put this, put this in here. The algebra is getting really interesting here, okay. All right, so that's, now that's the final, see, image position outside the lens. See, that's outside the lens here, and it's in terms of all the parameters and the initial S01. So that's that's what we want. We want that formula. Okay, now comes the fun. Uh, the fun. Uh, so here, uh, what we're going to do, you know, for a definition of the back focal length, uh, we're going to have uh, the rays come in parallel. And if the rays come in parallel, that means you want the object for the first surface to be infinity, a distance. Yeah, so we're gonna go far away, come in parallel, just see wherever we, wherever we wind up. It's like, that's the back focal length, that's gonna be it. So when we do that, the uh, image, final image, is gonna be by definition, the back focal length. So here, uh, we're going to do uh, basically calculus problem uh, here. Uh, we want the limit uh, not calculus, uh, it's a limit problem, but I first learned about those, uh, I think it was calculus class where they started teaching us that. So it really, it's not a derivative, but it's, it's these limits. These limits are cool. You take the limit as the object at distance goes to infinity, you know, of this thing, and that's going to give you the back focal length. So let's see if we can see what's going on here. If S uh, if S01 zips off to infinity, I can neglect the F1. I can neglect the F1. So what will happen is then that the S's will cancel. And then if that happens like that, then I'm going to get here F2D. Nothing changes there. But then for here... If the F1 can be tossed away, since you know the S0, uh, the S01 is like super large, 
then the super large terms will cancel off and you'll get you'll get this in the uh, numerator and then if you divide d minus n f2 here if you throw away that f1 you're just going to get n times f1 and this is equal to the back focal length so we can then write for the back focal length f2 and that will be d minus n f1 and divide by d minus n and then we can have the sum here by factoring out so that's this is our like a result it's kind of a cool cool result now remember my math teacher is saying that to, to do this kind of a thing clean all right we have c we have the form like x this is an x and we have an x uh, minus the f1 all right and the math teacher said you want to do this elegantly as x goes to infinity what you really should do is all right this is the limit as x goes to infinity uh, you shouldn't just say throw that away like i was talking loosely like a physicist throw that away throw that away now what you do is you divide top and bottom by by x then you have one over one minus f1 over x then here when the x goes to infinity you see if you take the limit as x goes to infinity of f1 over x well that's going to go to zero so then this is zero and then you get you get the one uh, here i was cavalier and said since this is large and that's small just throw it away and then they just cancel out but this is and you get the one uh you know times this and this is a more elegant way of doing it mathematically so we got it the back focal length and now we'll go to f3 and this is the formula the formula for the front focal length ff now to do that uh, what we would like to do is uh, have this this big equation here, which we already have worked out. And if you want the front focal length, then the final destination of the image is as an, at infinity. Uh, because if we start off here and send the light out, uh, then eventually going to go at infinity. So the image distance is going to be infinity. And to have this be infinity, we want the denominator to vanish. Because, you know, if you have like one over zero, uh, that's, you know, as, as the de denominator gets smaller and smaller, then the uh, SI2 gets bigger and bigger. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and set this equal to zero. So we have, let's maybe do it down, down here so we can see it. So D minus N F2 there, uh, that, that should equal, okay, this here, D minus N F2, that should equal like what's on the other side, N F1. And then the S, the S01 uh, is going to be the front focal length. See, so then this is the front focal length uh, minus F1. So that's kind of neat to see that. So if we uh, then want to do the so solution to this, uh, this takes a little bit of time uh, to do a little more algebra. Okay, so setting the uh, denominator here to zero means D minus NF2 it's going to be equal to all this. And I think here I would prefer to follow the book. And in the book, what we did is we didn't make that substitution until the very end. So let's go ahead and put that back. 
uh, say the S01 minus F1. And this way, the steps I'm going to do will coordinate with the textbook. All right. So let's go ahead and copy that down again. D minus N F2 is N F1 S01 S01 minus F1. And we keep in the back of our mind that this is the front focal length now. Okay, so what we do next is we're going to multiply both sides by this denominator. So then we'll have N F1 S01 is S01 minus F1 times D minus NF2. And then this gets us doing some more algebra. Definitely the language of physics is mathematics. I'm speaking mathematics to you for this hour. All right, so you multiply that out, and this is minus S01 NF2, and we have a minus F1D, and then we have a plus NF1F2. And now let's start collecting uh, terms. We want to get S01, the S01 by itself. So uh, let's get those on the one side of the equation. N, F1, there's the S01. And we'll uh, add this one next. O1, N, F2. And then we'll subtract this one next. And that's going to be equal to uh, this. That's what's left. And this here, I can factor out and have an F1 come out of there. And that's a minus D plus an NF2. Okay, then the next step is to, uh, on this side, to pull out that S01. So you have NF1 plus NF2 minus D. And now the NO1, we have the F1 minus D there plus the NF2 inside that parentheses. And we divide by all this stuff. NF1 plus NF2 minus D. And that gets us uh, let's have the F1 minus D plus NF2. Let's not change the numerator, but down here I like to do a factor out that in like this. And then for the last step, I like to multiply top and bottom by, by minus 1. And that means this is going to, and this going to, we can replace this now. This is your front focal length. So this will be F1. And this would be then a plus D minus NF2. And then down here, I need to switch the order because of the minus sign multiplication. And that is the completion of this section where we have the front focal length. Very nice. And what remains to be done last is, well, let's say a couple things you want to do, but the main thing next is to get the equivalent focal length. We want to go for the equivalent focal length. So for the equivalent focal length, that's this F here. So for the equivalent focal length here, this F there, let's, let's start with the basic formulas that we've had so far. We want 1 over SO plus 1 over SI is 1 over F. 
and the magnification minus SI over SO. And what we are going to do is go back to what we had before uh, these equations uh, here, where we had, you know, this, this equation here, where this part there is the one over F1. So I like to rewrite that. So one over S zero one plus N over S I one equals one over F one, all right? Then I would like to write uh, the second uh, case here next to it, N over S zero two plus one over S I two is one over F two. So, you know, here, you know, the, the one over F one is just the N minus one over R one and the one over F two is the one minus n over r two, all right? But this, these look friendly, these formulas here. Then uh, for the magnification, uh, let's go ahead and write these down again. So here's magnification for one, just copy, minus si one over n s zero one, and then copy uh, for the uh, second case here, is minus n s i two over s zero or o two. Okay, then I would like to also copy these two. Uh, just like the copy to ever again because it's all over the place here. We want to collect collect the tools. So here we got this is n f one. 0, 1 over the, okay, just, just copying that formula, then copying this, this one down. All right, F2 and the S, O2, O2 minus N, F2. And uh, we should always remember, we should always remember too that this D, if you subtract the S I one, you get the S O two. So in other words, the S O two is always D minus S I one. So now I have my equations. I have all my equations here. So we're going to, what we want to do now is we want to, and by the way, we should give this a, a title. Uh, let's give this a title here. This is going to be Gould Strand's equation. That's what we're going to be looking at here. You can think of it as kind of like a generalization of the lens maker's formula for a thick lens. Awesome formula. So, uh, to find this equivalent uh, F, we, we measure the SO and SI either from these planes, because that would be the definition um, where you have your, uh, your, focal, your focal length. That's effective. So what we're saying here is let's take the M, which is the product of the two magnifications, which we can now you know, plug in minus SI1 over N S. O1, and then the second one minus N S I2 over S O2. Here the N's are going to cancel and you get an I1, you get an uh, O1, and you get an I2, and you get an O2, which makes, makes sense. And that must match. This must must match when I'm trying to find the equivalent uh, situation where you know you have your S O measured from that plane, S I measured from that plane. We have these Fs. I want this has to match. So that's an observation. 
And then if you want the effective, if you want the effective focal length, which we're gonna call just F, that means I gotta run my object out to infinity, but then identify the SO and SI is measured from the proper places. Okay, so if I do that, then one over S O one plus N over S I one, which equals one over F, that's the same formula that we're using. This will, this will zip over, when this goes to infinity, this will zip over so that the N over S I one equals one over F one. And we could say the S I one is going to become, you know, the SI1 is going to become, uh, bring it over to the other size, NF1. So that's an important observation, intermediate step, as we trace through the lens. Right, then we're going to use uh, for uh, the object distance for two, that's the D minus SI1, which we already know about. That's this uh, cool formula. So that means we want D minus N F1, all right? So we need to find though, we trace through, we need to get this thing. This is the, uh, the S, the SI2, like the final destination. This is F2 over S, O2, just copying it over again. And that's gonna become F2, and then that we put in for uh, the S O2, we put in this D minus and F1, and then we divide, we put the D minus and F1 in again. This is what's going in here, see? And that's this D minus in F1. And then when we do that, what I would like to do there is uh, go ahead and factor out. This is a factor out the N. So we have F1 plus F2, all right? And now, when you do algebra city, it's very easy to get lost and say like, let's like, let's regroup. Let's regroup. Well, the object, uh, the object, uh, a distance is equal to S, S O. All right. And the reason why we can say this is because if S, uh, O one zips off to infinity, then uh, we don't worry about that piece in there. Uh, if you measure uh, from infinity to here and from infinity to there, you're gonna get the basically the same thing. So we're gonna write that down. And then we're also gonna write down that this equation. Okay, so I'm gonna say this is for the large, the large distances. So you can say that as we zip that off. And then here, I'm gonna write this one down I1 is an F1. I'm gonna write down my favorite one here, which I've written down a lot. The SO2 is D minus an F1. And then the SI uh, here, the SI here is measured from there. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be your, your focal length, all right, because the, and that's where the things are going to focus here and measuring the SI from that plane. So therefore, this is going to be the F, all right? So now with all that, we can then go back to write the M equation down. Now the M equation is this one here. Let's go ahead and copy that one again. SI1 over SO1, SI2 over SO2. And that has to be equal to the minus SI over SO, which is the master formula here, say for the system. Okay, but now if we start plugging things in, like for here, 
we can plug that in. This is going to be N F1 over SO, since these are going to be the same, super large. And then this is SI2 over, and then I'm going to put, I'm going to put here the, the D at minus N F1 there. And that's going to be equal over here. The SI is the F. So this is going to be minus F over S O. Okay, now, now given this uh, relationship, we can, uh, we can see that uh, the SO is here, the SO is there, so that means this stuff here uh, has to equal this minus, minus F. So N F1 SI2 over D minus NF1 is equal to minus F. All right. But now let's look at this SI2, which is begging to be substituted. So if we go up to our formula to find where that is, we have, I recopy it, we have this. All right. We have that. And let's look at this left hand side and write down SI2 as minus F and then D minus N F1 over N and F1. Okay, so that's this left hand side. And now we're gonna look at this one. And for this one, we're going to substitute in things here. So let's go ahead and do that. And that's the same, that's the same, this is the same thing. So that's gonna be F2 and then D minus NF1. And then down the bottom, the D minus NF1 for the SO2 minus NF2. And here we can solve for F. It's like, like we got rid of everything, all right? So that means that we have F2 D minus NF1 over D minus NF1. So I go ahead and factor that out. In other words, the N can be pulled out of there. And that's just, this is, this is like D minus NF1 minus NF2, like that's what that is. And that has to be this one, go ahead and flip, make that a plus sign and flip this. So it's N F1 minus D N F1. Uh, I may flip that back in a second, all right? Uh, it depends on how the formula is gonna look. Uh, so then if we, uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't mean to do that because uh, it cancels out, it, it, it cancels out. So it's better to just cancel that out. So let's just do that. Uh, let's go ahead and write it back the way it was. F, uh, D minus NF1 over NF1. I just wrote it, I wrote it the way it was because then you could see this will cancel that. And that's like easier to see it that way. So then this is F2 over D minus N, F1 plus F2. And that's going to be equal then minus F over N F1. We're almost finished now. We're almost finished. So this, this equation is going to give us here F is equal to, uh, put a minus sign, so minus sign, and bring this over to the left, N F1, F2, so we're bringing this over to the numerator up there. And then this is D minus N, F1 plus F2. And here, uh, we could now bring that minus sign in. Uh, here's somewhat, 
subjective, you know, what to do next. Uh, so let's say F is N, F1, F2 over N times the sum and then minus D, all right? And a lot of folks like to flip this, have one over F like that. Then this is N, F1 plus F2 minus D over N, F1, F2. And now this is cool, one over F is here, N, F1 plus F2, over n f1 times f2 it looks nice minus d over n f1 f2 and then uh, we can see that the n's cancel here and this is going to be you know one over and one over so here n's cancel and these cancel one over f2 and this will get you one over f1 i'll put the one over f1 first and this is D. And now we have the justification that there's only one effective focal length because of the symmetry. See, F1 and F2, if you, if you interchange F1 and F2, that means if we turn the lens around the other way and did the whole calculation over again, uh, we get the same answer. So that is what's justifying that this F is equal to this F. It's like a, you think of that as like a proof. Um, that the, the two are the same. All right, amazing. So that's a beautiful formula and a lot of effort to get to it. You know, when I was a boy, my aunt gave me a puzzle, a thousand pieces, and I enjoyed putting it together very much. And that's kind of what we're doing today. It's like a thousand piece puzzle. So like theoretical physics, that's like part of it in experimental physics, like you spend hours in a lab, like, you know, fine tuning, getting things right. So that's part of the trade. And if you like doing the puzzles, uh, then you like, you know, maybe doing what we did here is kind of cool. All right. And now the last thing is the lens maker's formula for the thick lens. All right. So that would be the last thing we're doing. And that's going to be F5. The lens maker's formula for the thick lens. Well, we basically have it here. This uh, Goulstrand's formula, we basically have it. If we take this which we already derived. And if we replace this with our, uh, remember our focal, our focal lengths, one over F1 was N minus one over R1, that was from before, and then one over F2 was one minus N over R2. Say so we just copied these two, two down again. So if we do that, then we can replace, remember the lens maker's formula once the cuts, once the radii uh, curvature. So this would be then, uh, we just substitute in N minus one over R1. And then uh, the second one here has the one minus. And so if I put a minus sign in front, I can then flip this back like that. And then I have a minus D over N. And then I have uh, two of these here, these things here, N minus one over R1. And then uh, a minus N minus one over R2. All right, because this one has it, if I want to flip this back, put a minus sign. So that means one over F uh, is equal to here we could do this n minus one and then have one over r1 minus one over r2 that looks familiar so the n minus one comes out 
you then have one over r1 and minus one over r2, but then what happens if the n minus one comes out, there's still an n minus one in here, there's a plus sign, two minus, sign, two minus signs. So you have an n minus one in there still, and you have that d, and then you're dividing by n r1, r2. Like this is the master formula. This is the lens maker's formula for a thick lens. You can be proud of yourself. Uh, doing these derivations today. This is advanced stuff. I mean, we're talking thick lens here. And notice that if the, the lens is thin, if the thickness uh, goes to zero, you recover what we had solved for last time. Uh, we had the lens maker's formula in a simpler form, was this form, if D goes to zero. So this complicated piece here, see the thickness is in that second uh, piece there, the correction for the thickness. Very, very, very beautiful stuff. All right, uh, a lot of algebra today. And there's the lens maker uh, shows up again. That's by the way, a Fresnel lens where they uh, have uh, made it very thin. Okay.